Today we're boosting my Plexi. I know it's not a Plexi. It's a 1971 Marshall 100 watt 1959 Super Lead. Worst name ever, right? Am I gonna say the 1971 1959 100 watt every time? If I say 1959, it it's, makes you think like it's from 1959. It doesn't make any sense. So we're calling it a Plexi because that's what people know as a Plexi, the 1959 Super Lead. So moving right along, 100 watt non-master volume old Marshall uh, is a bastard. So this one's been gone through by Dave Friedman. It's completely stock, nothing modded, just because I've had people say in the past, like, oh, that's totally modded because it has a lot of gain. They have a lot of gain. You just have to get up to like eight, nine, 10, and then it's, it's got a lot of gain. But there's a price to pay for that gain. So even, I'm not running through a cab. When I've run this through a cab, it's Armageddon. The house shakes, I'm at a studio, and like the room, the walls are, just shaking. I'm not going to subject my poor, poor doggy to that. So I'm running the 100 watt plexi into a Fryat power load. Now let me show you what happens. This is not a power load problem. This is any load box. The other problem is you're pushing so much amplification into the load box that as you get anywhere near the head, it just squeals on you. Oh, look at that. You're gonna hear the tubes sing, which is the sound of the guitar coming through the tubes. And you're also going to hear the sound of the guitar coming through the load box. It becomes a speaker. It's right here. Fan and fizzy bleed through. Uh, not a fun sound to get mixed in to your awesome sound that'll come out of the speakers, which is here. So that means you gotta turn up your speakers to a pretty significant level to get up and over the sound of the 100 watt head blasting through there. So what's the alternative? Well, you could mic up a 412 and obliterate your neighbors. Honestly, that's gonna last like 20 minutes before the cops come. There are amps out there with a master volume that sound pretty dang close. Like my BE100, it sounds pretty close. But still, there is something about the amp that's about to explode, shoving 100 watts of throttle into this little thing. It's, it's a special thing, it's got just that now you can take the Marshall back to about six, seven. You get a beautiful somewhere between uh, ACDC and Van Halen-y kind of thing. Uh, it cleans up nicely. It's got some edge, it's, a, it's tighter. And then you have a world of colors at your fingertips or toes, I should say, feet, uh, with your boost pedals. So let's go to my masterfully wired pedal board. Again, here's the Plexi on tap. Everything is on 10, except the bass is on four and the mid is on eight, but the presence, treble, and volume is on 10. I'm going in just the main uh, bright input there, going into the power load. I'm using my Big Harry Guitars IRs, which just sounds really great with this. And uh, let me back this off to about six and I'll show you where I really like it. It's seven. So it got tighter. I think it's balanced. Okay, we're diving in. We've got uh, Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer modified by Analog Man, Analog Man Graphic EQ from Boss, J Rocket, Archer, the Steve Stevens signature pedal. This is a Friedman Buxom Boost, which I removed the nameplate and put my own cryptic graphics in there. Um, I've got the Source Audio Graphic EQ, which is digital, so it's super clean. The MXR Micro Amp, MXR 
uh, Custom Audio, MXR Custom Audio Electronics, Bob Bradshaw, Boost. We're just going to be looking at the Boost side. <laughs>